Good morning, welcome to Solar Life. I'm Drew, and today I thought I would give you a tour of our solar system so you could see how it all works. It's a beautiful day out here in the country. The birds are singing, uh, the woodpeckers are hammering against the trees, and essentially, this is why we're out here. It's beautiful. So this morning, sun came up, came over top of the trees, and uh, the way our house is set up is that it hits the front of our house in the morning straight on. And so that's why we put all the solar panels on the front of our house as well as uh, on the southeastern side of the house as well. So in the morning, the sun comes up, hits the side of the house and hits the six panels that are on that side and starts to charge the house essentially. Um, then later on in the day, the sun will come around and when it gets to about here, it'll hit both sides of the house at the same time. It will charge all of the panels up. And then uh, as the day progresses, the sun will travel down into uh, the ravine over here and then we'll lose sun eventually in the afternoon. And then it only really hits that side of the house. Eventually it stops hitting the front of the house. The reason why we chose to put our panels on the walls uh, to look like this was because when you're designing an off-grid house uh, or an off-grid system for your house, you have to design for the winter time or for the darkest, uh, longest periods of uh, dark in your entire year, which is essentially December and January. Uh, in those months, the winter angle of the sun is quite low. It comes up right in the front of our house, uh, travels across the sky for five or six hours, and then drops below the trees real quick. And so the sun never really gets very high up in the sky in the winter. So we put our panels on the side so that they would get maximum solar frontage in the winter and get the most amount of power that we could. Plus we get a huge amount of snow out here. The snow is quite literally up to my neck uh, in this area. I have to snowshoe around here just to move. Um, so all that snow also lands on our roof and it means that I would have to clean those panels off every single time that it snowed and uh, it's quite high up to get onto my roof and, and dangerous. So the panels are on the side of the house and it's worked perfectly uh, since we installed everything. So the other big thing that we had to do around here to get ready to go off grid that uh, we didn't quite realize how much work it was going to be is that we had to take down all of the trees that blocked the sun from the house. And there was quite a few big maple trees that were uh, very close to the house inside of the old power line area and then we had trees that were on both sides of the power lines and then we had other trees that were farther away um, but we had to take down a lot of trees we had to hire a professional arborist to come in and take the trees down from a boom truck so that they didn't hit our house and they didn't take down the power line and it was all very safe but it was expensive after that we took down the rest of the trees ourselves, and uh, this summer actually i'll be cutting them all up for firewood for next year Essentially, there's six panels on the front of the house and on the side of the house, there's another 12 panels. The six panels on the front of the house are monocrystalline panels. They're 305 watt. And then on the side of the house, we've got 12 more panels, but three of them are polycrystalline panels that are 250 watt each. The other nine are monocrystalline panels. Those panels uh, all add up to make about 5,200 watts of power or 5.2 kilowatts of potential power production. Most days we never see that much power coming into our system all at once. We see some in the morning, we see more when it's hitting both panels, or both arrays I should say, and then uh, at the end of the day it drops down again when it's only hitting the, uh, the main side of the house. So we, we've never actually reached 5200 watts of power. We've come pretty close, but we've never actually got there. Today might be a rare day. Um, essentially though, uh, right now, we're only producing power off the front of the house. As you can see, the panels on this side are dark and they're not producing very much power at all. So 
essentially right now we're producing about 1500 watts of power and if you do the math there's 1830 watts of potential power on the front of the house so we're producing about 80 percent of the potential power that the panels on the front of the house can produce so that's not too bad right now our battery percentage is about 70 percent and it's been charging up all morning, so we've already made uh, probably a couple of kilowatts by now. And it'll charge up uh, fairly quickly and be fully charged sometime by the early afternoon. And then we, we probably won't even produce more than uh, 10 kilowatts today because our batteries were fairly well charged. They were a little bit depleted from a couple of dark days, but uh, essentially we only produce as much power as we need to charge the batteries all the extra power is not used so on sunny days like this when it's when we when we know we're going to produce more power than we need we start looking at all the ways in which we can use uh, the power to our benefit that day so we do laundry we do the dishes uh, we do any kind of uh, heavy loads like uh, if we needed to vacuum or running run or if I had to run any types of uh, power tools or charge up uh, any big um, rechargeable items like uh, some of my um, my Milwaukee tools use a fair amount of power so that's what we do on sunny days like this uh, the other cool thing that's really nice about a sunny day like this is that we don't have to burn wood even though it's cold outside uh, right now. It's probably, I'm guessing, just above zero. Uh, my hands are pretty cold. So usually uh, we'd have to burn wood on a day like this to keep the house from getting too cold, but the, the solar air heaters that are on the front of the house are warming up the kitchen and the living room space right now as I talk to you so that's pretty great though they've taken uh, all of the daytime sunny uh, time away from us having to burn wood so we're saving a fair amount of wood from these handmade solar air heaters it's about 12 o'clock now and the sun has moved around and is hitting both sides of the house it's hitting the front panels and the side panels at a slight oblique angle and so we are generating more power now than we were earlier this morning, somewhere around 1800 watts. And it's plenty of power to charge up the batteries. There's lots of amperage. And so one of the things that I think is important to understand about an off-grid solar system is that in order for the batteries to charge in the first place, you first have to take care of the load in the house. So uh, right now there's not much going on in the house there's maybe five or so amps worth of electricity coming out of the batteries there's just a few lights uh, the modem a computer and some of the fans for the solar air heaters which are all running right now so uh, with that kind of amperage being drawn out of the batteries there's probably an extra 20 or 25 amps coming into the solar charger, the charge controller, and that's allowing that energy to go into the battery systems and charge up the house. So we're into the 80% range now, and uh, there's still lots of sunlight left today, but essentially we're going to charge up fully uh, by early afternoon. One of the things that's really great about sunny days like today, when the sun gets all the way up in the sky and is hitting both sides of the house then all three solar air heaters are running at the same time and that's pushing hot air into all parts of the house from the front and the back and that gets the house nice and warm it's uh it was around you know 17 degrees when we woke up this morning and now it's a lovely 22 degrees in the house in fact it can get so warm in there that we sometimes have to open the door just to regulate the heat during the day you may have heard me say before that some of my panels are monocrystalline and some of them are polycrystalline panels. So I thought I would explain the main difference between the two different kinds of panels. The monocrystalline panels, which are the black ones, which most of my solar array is made up of, are slightly more efficient. They're all 305 watt panels and uh, essentially they're a slightly newer design and they absorb electricity a little bit better than the polycrystalline panels. 
those are the lighter blue ones that you see behind me. Uh, I only have three of those on the house. Two of them we bought before we went with the larger off-grid system. So I bought a third panel just to uh, balance out the system and to match. And those uh, polycrystalline panels are 255 watt panels and they're the exact same size. So if you look at it that way, they're slightly less efficient because for the same amount of area, they produce less power than a monocrystalline panel. Uh, that produces more power with the same uh, square footage. So uh, essentially it didn't make much of a difference to us that they were different. Uh, we just tried to uh, blend them in aesthetically to the house as much as you could blend anything into a solar house like this. And uh, they work just as good as the monocrystalline panels. So I kind of like having them on there. It gives me a chance to explain the two different types to people. So it's the end of the day here and the, uh, you know, it's around three or four o'clock and the sun is starting to set into the trees and it's just starting to skim the sides of the solar panels now and we're not getting uh, full solar absorption, but the batteries are fully charged. They've been at 100% for a few hours now. So the only thing that the solar panels are doing right now is helping to carry some of the load of the house. That's about it. That's what it's like on a sunny day here at, uh, at our place. We can get through a number of cloudy, rainy, stormy days before we have to worry about the generator starting. So that's about it for this solar day here on Solar Life. We've made it to the end of the charging cycle. And after this, the batteries are going to start supplying the house with power and they'll keep us in power all night long and for the next few days, even if it's dark and cloudy. Generally, most nights we use up about 20% of the battery power and then depending on what the next day is like, we'll either start uh, charging the next morning or we'll, uh, you know, we'll start, we'll keep using the batteries the rest of the next day if it's dark and cloudy. Okay, so we're downstairs, we're in the basement and we're, we're looking at the entire solar system right here. So this is the inverter, this is the charge controller, and this is the readout display and the interface. Up here is the generator's auto start, which will start the generator when the battery voltage here drops below 46 volts. So uh, here we can see that we've made 11.5 kilowatts of power. We're currently drawing in 6.5 5 amps, but we're using up 9 amps of power. The charge controllers in the float stage and the batteries are at 99%. So essentially we're, we're done charging and we're going to be using power for the rest of the night. So this is the battery bank of 6 volt batteries and as you can see they're wired in series in a bank of eight, each one making up 48 volts. So there's essentially two 48 volt banks of battery power all bolted together to create one giant battery that supplies our entire house. Inside of each of these little caps you can see the, the water and so that's part of what I have to maintenance every once in a while. This is a temperature control. It maintains uh, control over the battery temperature and if it starts to get too hot then it turns on a fan and the fan exhausts all the gases that come off of these lead acid batteries out of the house right there. So there's just a little fan that runs that. So that's the battery bank that runs the whole house. So you can see they're tied together in fairly big uh, cables. This is all DC power. So this DC battery bank feeds this inverter which converts all the power to AC which then sends it over to the house through some wires up here and feeds the panel. 
So that's about it for the solar system. Big bunch of batteries, charge controller, inverter, and a generator startup. That's about it for this episode of Solar Life. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And if you like what you see here today, feel free to subscribe. There'll be more episodes coming up soon.